Hello everyone, Gilly here. I recently gave a presentation called Refactoring Refactored with Ramda. It was a lot of fun, um, but really before it, I, I really enjoyed making those other three videos about Ramda. Um, so I decided to make another one. This one doesn't have a set of uh, categories as the other ones. I'm gonna call this one just a case study. It's gonna be an example that's gonna bring to light a bunch of cool features in Ramda that I haven't really shown off yet. So what is the function we're gonna be working on today? Uh, it's called deepest path. And basically what this deepest path function does is it takes in a path and it takes in an object and it tells you back how far down the object the path can go before a key doesn't exist. So you can imagine the object being maybe something that has a person on it. Um, you might say up the path, you know, person address zip. And if that's your path and the object has that path fully uh, defined inside of it, it'll give you back that exact thing. If the person were say missing an address, it could only give you back person. Um, if that doesn't make a lot of sense, let's walk through the code. I think that'll clear it up a little bit. So the first thing we're gonna do to achieve this is we're gonna store off a temp variable called result path, which is gonna represent the path that we found to be uh, existent in the object. And then we're gonna loop through the path and at each stage, we're gonna set this variable component to be the path, the current part of the path that we're looking at. Um, if the component is in the object, we're gonna store it off. Otherwise, we're just gonna return the result path. You know, we've hit a dead end, we can't go any further into the object, uh, let's return. Now the very last th thing this loop has to do is it has to sort of, if you will, move the pointer along. So if we're looking at some part of an object and we've found that the key is in there, um, which, you know, this will only be hit if this first condition's hit, um, if we found that the key is in that object, we have to move down into that key to check the next part, you know? We found person was in the object, so we have to move to person to see if they have an address. And at the very end, if we've made it down all the way through the object, or through the path rather, inside of the object, we're just gonna return the result path, which is storing our temporary variable. So hopefully that makes it somewhat clear to you what we're doing today. I've written functions like this um, I think this is pretty common JavaScript code. It represents code that's kind of optimized, you know. There's only one loop going on here. Um, I have a couple of specs that I've written for this, maybe like six or seven or so. Um, maybe I'll just run them real quick to make sure they pass. It'd be kind of embarrassing if I uh, showed you an example that was failing right off the bat. Uh, you know, maybe just for the fun of it, I'll do something funky to see if I can make it fail. Doop, 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 doop. Yeah, okay, that works. So without further ado, let's get to it. Now in this one, before I just kind of dive in and start refactoring, I'm actually gonna change the algorithm of this. Uh, sorry about that, throwing a little wrench in the works. My thought is that, however, this kind of loop, this tightly coupled loop with this logic and all this little bits of state is not easily directly refactored into Ramda, unfortunately. So, I'm gonna kind of change the algorithm and break it up into a few pieces that will make it more easily uh, comply with something that we can make Ram to ask, uh, if you will. So the first thing I need is a function basically has path. What this function is gonna do is it's gonna be a lot like our function below, except the big difference is that it's just gonna return true or false. It's not gonna accumulate the results for us. So that's my first step to breaking this up. So. I'm just gonna steal this loop because it's gonna look a lot like this loop. Um, the big difference is gonna be if the component's in the object, then all we're gonna do is we're gonna set the pointer forward. So let me move that into here. Um, otherwise, we're gonna return false. And then if we can get to the end of this loop, we're gonna return true. Now, I don't have tests for these individual functions. I'm kind of hoping I can just get them right and then we'll run our existing tests once I've pulled them into deepest path. A little scary, we'll see how it goes. Um, the other function I need is what I'm gonna call all but last. Basically what all, all but last is gonna do is it's gonna take a list of values and it's gonna return all of the values in the list in a new list or I'm sorry, I used the word list. I should say array in JavaScript, they're arrays. It's gonna return a new array with all but the last value. 
Um, this is a pretty popular thing in functional programming, as we'll see. So I think there's a way to do this just with default, with vanilla JavaScript. I think you can say return values.slice, um, slice from zero, which means start at index zero, and slice all the way up to values.length minus one. Actually, I think that might be the amount you take. So if there are n values, um, start at index zero and then take n minus one values. Hopefully that makes sense. So let me just run this to see if I have any just obvious errors. These tests, of course, aren't testing these actual functions that I've just defined. Um, and then now let me just see if I can pull these in and see how I did. Uh, moment of truth, if you will, almost. So I'm gonna change this into a while loop and I'm gonna say while not has path. Let's see, has path takes path and an object. Path and an object. Um, all we're gonna do is we're gonna say the path becomes all but the last of the path. And then at the very end, we're gonna return path. So the new algorithm is kind of, uh, I would say more declarative. It's absolutely not as efficient as the other algorithm. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be uh, taking our full path and then saying, does this work on this object, yes or no? If the answer is yes, we're done. If the answer is no, well, we'll take the last part off of the path and try that. And we're just gonna repeat that and repeat that and repeat that. Uh, there's a little bit of danger here, here um, with this has path, but theoretically, it, you know, like it could loop forever, but I think this is actually a safe place to do this. So let's see how we did. Oh, wow, I actually don't really believe it. Um, doing, writing all that code and having it pass instantly is a little scary. So I'm just gonna concat one on the end. Hopefully that'll break a couple of tests. Okay, it did. So we've ABC one, but we expect the ABC. Okay, wow, I guess I got lucky there. Um, so what I'm gonna do now, now this thing is prime for Ramda refactoring. So I'm gonna bring in Ramda. <clears throat> Ramda's pretty nifty. Um, and I'm just gonna start with the simpler function, all but last. It turns out in Ramda, this is called init. So that should just be immediately replaceable there. If I run it, Ramda's gonna tell me if I'm full crap or not, and apparently in this case, I'm not. Uh, shock or shocker, a little bit. Um, has path is a little more tricky. And I'm not sure that my implementation is gonna be satisfactory for some of you who know your JavaScript really, really well. In my mind, it's good enough for now, so I'm gonna go with it. But if you don't like it, please let me know, and let me know if there's a better way especially. That's what this is all about, learning and me learning as well. Um, so to do this, I'm gonna say my new has path function, and I'm gonna do a couple of things you may not have seen here before, but don't be afraid. I'll explain them in a second. Um, I'm gonna do r dot path eq, which takes in um, some kind of a path, but I'm not gonna give it a path yet. So I'm gonna use that special thing to flag that this is gonna come later. So I'm gonna say where some path, which I haven't been given yet, equals undefined, and some object I haven't been given yet. So basically you can think of these r dot under unders as being placeholders to be filled in later. Um, so this is a function which, uh, has path is technically a function which takes two things. It takes a path and it takes an object and it just asks, is the object equal to undefined at that path? Now there's also some property here where if some sub part of the path is non-existent, um, it'll return undefined for the whole path. So if you gave it A, B, C, D, but your object only had A, it would return undefined. So let's see if this is an immediate replacement for what we had below? The answer is no, there's a bug. Ooh, no, not a bug. Okay, good, I finally I finally made a mistake. It's been too long. Okay, so we're looping forever. Um, init's okay. Did I do this backwards? Let's see. I want to know where my path is equal to undefined in some later provided object. Well, I sure didn't do this wrong, I don't think. Um, let's see. While the thing does not, oh. <laughs> oh, silly me. Okay, so I'm saying it has a path if it's equal to undefined at some point. 
which is actually the opposite of what we want. Um, this illustrates kind of a sweet feature in RAM that I can say r.complement and I can get a function back which just negates the result. Now let's see how that came out. It came out well. Yeah, it came out pretty well. Um, let's see, what else do I care about here? Well, this actual deepest path thing is kind of kind of imperative still. You know, not the cleanest. Um, I'm gonna use uh, something called until. Basically what until does is it takes um, a condition, a, pr a predicate function, so a pr some predicate function, and then it takes some modifier function, um, and it applies the modifier until the predicate's true. So I'm gonna redefine deepest path. Let's see, I still need these. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get rid of these this time, which is okay. You can't always do that. Um, so what do I want here? I want to say Arda until has path. So until the object has the path, um, and you, you know I'm gonna need another placeholder here, which we'll fix in a moment. Um, R dot has path, and we're looking inside of the overall object. So until it has path, let's just chop off all but the last value. Now let's see how I did. I think this is pretty close to the final Ramda solution. Um, sweet, it still passes. Um, so you, you JavaScript whizzes out there might be a little unhappy with this. Technically, you can have an object that looks like this in JavaScript, I believe. Oop. And um, A is a key that's in this object, but it has an undefined value. So in this case, it'll say that A is not a key in the object. But, you know, in my mind, this is good enough for now. So the next thing I want to do is I kind of want to... Um, just get rid of this placeholder here. I think it's obscuring the logic of kind of the main thing we're trying to do. So I'm just gonna make a new function which flips has path. So const, I'm gonna say path, I'm gonna call path in. So, you know, I'm trying to imply here the object is the thing that comes first. I don't know if it's good. It, it'll work well for this example. It might not be a good uh, general pattern. Um, so I'm just going to take r dot flip has path. So that just says, give me a new function back based on has path that um, takes the arguments in the reverse order of has path. So I should be able to say uh, path in object. So let's see if that was successful. And it is. Great. So I think in the end this is probably good enough and this is a pretty clean solution if you ask me. So we're just saying r dot until the path is in the object, let's uh, delete off all but the last node of the path. So hopefully you enjoyed that and hopefully you learned a couple things about Ramda. Thank you for watching.